Hey friends and welcome to a new video. In this video I will give you a brief introduction to Simulink. So first of all, what is Simulink? It is a graphical block-oriented MATLAB extension. And with Simulink you can simulate and analyze dynamical systems. So some applications before we jump right into the MATLAB environment and start Simulink. So what you can do is to use Simulink for wireless communication. That means that you can simulate the impact of algorithms and antenna designs on wireless system performance. You can even design hardware-ready IP at high level and automate prototyping and verification. What you can also do is use Simulink for robotics, which is incredibly cool. So you can basically control a robot with algorithms you develop and automatically generate code that you can run on hardware. You can even use it for image recognition. So you can incorporate vision into your robots and you can also model and simulate hardware implementation with TestBench using frame to pixel stream conversion for instance. So what we can do in the future if you're interested in that which will not come in this video is to model a bit more complex systems for instance the predator-prey equation which is also known as the Lotka-Volterra equation. It would be very interesting to see for you how a dynamic system behaves and how you can implement that with blocks using Simulink. So feel free to vote in the comment section. What we can also do is to model differential equations. As you can remember, in the past I published a video where we implemented a differential equation for a single degree of freedom oscillator and we can use that system and implement it into Simulink. So if you want to see that, feel also free to vote in the comment section and maybe we can find some cool synergy effects. Moving on, so right now we have the demo where I will show you how you open Simulink and how to use it. So hey friends, we are in the MATLAB environment right now and as you can see on the top you can see the Simulink button. We can open this module or library by clicking on this button. So we started Simulink, now we have a variety of options. We can either start with a blank model, we can use a blank subsystem for instance and we have different other possibilities that we can use. We can also open examples, which I really like because we can open a simulation of a bouncing ball, open that model and reverse engineer that. That also works with GUIs, so if you want to know how a GUI works in MATLAB, you download an example of that and then reverse engineer it to see how it was built. So very cool examples that you can also use, but right now it's a beginner guide and I want to show you how you can get easily started without being overwhelmed. So here we are, I have chosen a blank model. Let's just close this right here. And here you can see the library browser. We will just focus on that for now. And if you click on that, you can see that you have plenty of options on blocks that you can choose instead of Simulink. For instance, we can choose a constant, we can increase our signal by a gain, we can integrate, we can differentiate, we can create subsystems, etc. We can also use Simulink for deep learning. As you can see, if you have the deep learning toolbox installed, of course. And we can deploy our code, for instance, on hardware, as I've mentioned previously. So right now we'll start very easy. Let's say you are a beginner and you don't know what block you want to choose. You can look around what you want to use. Right now we can, for instance, type in the search bar, sign, click enter. And here you have several sine wave options. As I mentioned, we start very easy. so we click on the sine wave and use drag and drop and just with the left mouse key and it will be loaded into the interface right here. I can make it bigger by just using the scroll wheel and I can pan around by using the middle mouse key. So I'm scrolling in, this is our sine wave and let's say we want to increase the gain of our signal. So what I can do is either open the library browser which is quite tedious, what I can also do is click in the, in the interface and just type in gain. This will give me some options and that's the gain I want to have. So here's the gain, perfect. I'll align this with the signal. And of course we want to connect these. And what we'll also do is to show the signal in a plot. And that's called scope. Again, I'm clicking on the interface, type in scope and there you have the scope. Click on it, align it with the rest and connect it. There you go. And you can adapt the settings by double clicking on each block. For instance, if we double click on the sine wave, you can see we have an amplitude of one, zero bias, one red per second, phase is zero, and sample time is also zero. We'll go with that first. And what we can do now is just run the simulation. 
what you can see on the bottom that it's compiling right now and once it has been finished for 10 seconds you, you hear the signal and you can double click on the scope and by double clicking on the scope you can see we have the signal and it goes from 0 to 10 seconds because we have the 10 seconds on, on the top as you can see and this was a gain of 1 and let's imagine we would change the gain so we say we want to have a gain of 5 for instance apply this say ok so the signal will be magnified by 5 what I want to do though is to see the signal with a gain of 5 in my scope but also the original signal to compare them what I do is double click on the scope click on this gear icon to configure the properties and we change the number of input ports to 2 click apply ok close this and as you can see we have another input and by clicking on this arrow and holding the right mouse key I can use or I can create another arrow but now I'm done let's just decrease the simulation time to make it a bit faster I'm clicking on run you can see the sound and here we have five seconds of course it's cut because I only have half of the time let's change it to 10 click run and as you can see we have 10 seconds and everything in one plot very convenient so what I can also do is I'll just take the system right now and move it up a little and I copy the system by clicking the right mouse key and just dragging it down this will create a copy you can also do the same with the block so you click on the block hold the right mouse key and drag it around so you can copy create a copy of that block so you don't have to type it in again let's just delete this block so we have a second model I delete this arrow and let's say I go with an input of let's say 3 click apply ok close this now we have three scopes that we can basically see make this a bit bigger so what I want to do now is I create a copy I create a copy of that one and another copy and also of the gain and another gain there we go we connect them again then we can put them into the scope we can change the gain let's say this is a gain of 10 okay and this is a gain of let's say 15 okay what we can do now is click on run again done and if I click on the scope you can see we have three beautiful signals in one plot let's, let's say you want to sum the three signals if you do it programmatically in MATLAB it might be a bit confusing first but what we can do is the so-called call the so-called sum sum block and here there you have two inputs and what I can do is double click on it again and add a plus sign add a plus sign to it so we have three inputs what I do now is again click on this arrow then right click and hold they have one input they have the second input and I have the third input perfect and then I want to maybe have it in a different scope so I can just type it in we have automatically one input so I don't have to copy this one and then edit the three inputs and so on so it's very convenient let's just see what it does for us okay there we have the three curves as normal and, and if we add them up we end up with this curve the signal that I have is quite boring and what I want to do is to change my sine waves so let's keep the first one as it is and I click on the second one and what I will do is to change the frequency let's say we give it a frequency of 10 for the second sine wave and we give the third sine wave input let's say a frequency of 20 red per second click OK so if you run the whole thing you can see that by clicking on this signal we have it like that so very messy and if you click on the sum you can see it's not smooth at all as you can see and why is that and I will show you why that is so we close this and if we right click in the interface you select model configuration parameters you click on it what we then do is go to solver so the first 
First option on the very top, we open solver details and what we have to adapt is the so-called max step size, which I'll now change to 0 0.01, let's say. Click OK. And what we then do is to run it again. So we'll, we have chosen another step size and what you can see now, it's very smooth as compared to the last run that we have done. And this will also be relevant if we run the ODE45 solver or solver differential equation like the single degree of freedom oscillator, where you can see that you have to adapt the step size, otherwise you're getting also very weird curves, which do not look very smooth. One last cool tip I want to give you is how you can rotate the blocks because sometimes students ask me how do I rotate this box because sometimes it can get very messy and you want to rotate maybe a block so if you select the block you click Control and R where you can just rotate it in the right direction so that's a very tip to know otherwise you look it up in the internet and click several <laughs> links and you won't get anywhere so with that being said thanks a ton for your attention I hope that you learned a lot in this quick and brief introduction to Simulink. Please, as I mentioned, put down in the comment section what you want to see next. As always, you can download the slides. These slides are for free, downloadable on my Patreon page, so you don't have to pay anything. I'll put the link down in the description. Here are the sources, and please give the video a like, give it a thumbs up, and share it with your friends who might start out with Simulink and who might benefit from the video. As always, make sure to keep engineering your mind, and see you in the next video. Peace.